Hi everyone, how are you doing? This morning was incredibly grey and rainy in London, uh, but now the sun has come out and now it's incredibly bright. I thought it was going to be uh, too grey almost to, to make a video today, but now the, the sun is like glaring at me, so it's almost too much. Uh, so that's just the, the way it goes. But I have a lot of new books that I want to talk about, and I've been buying myself a lot of new books recently. And I sort of hope that my partner doesn't watch this video because I really don't need to be buying myself all these new books because uh, there are stacks and stacks of books all over our apartment which uh, are unread and that I really want to read and want to get to and uh, so yeah I don't need to be adding more to that but you know we just can't help ourselves and I did want to kind of give myself a little treat of buying some books this this week um, because you know I did the interview last week with Joyce Carol Oates and which was something I initiated myself in which I obviously really wanted to do it was like such a dream to be able to to do that but at the same time I was incredibly anxious about it and I kept thinking oh I don't know should should I go through with this should I should I message her and see if she she wants to do this and you know it was one of those things in in life where I really like pushed myself to to actually go through and do it and I'm so glad that I did and and uh, and because I like pushed myself through it I thought I deserved a little bit of a reward because I you know I think when we we push ourselves to go beyond and do things that you know we really don't need to do but that we really want to do and that um, we we do feel very nervous about that you know you should reward yourself in in some way anyway I'm just trying to justify <laughs> behind myself books this this week so uh, so yeah I there um, there are books that I went and bought at a bookshop on the first day that that um, some bookshops reopened in London and I already discussed these books at the end of of, um, the video I made about going to do that and that whole experience. So, um, so I'm not going to talk about these again. Uh, but speaking of the interview I did with Joyce Carol Oates, um, she in, she recommended to me this author named Norman Locke, and he has this whole series of novels called the um, the American series or the American novels um, that he wrote, which are sort of playing off from great American novelists. And I can't believe I've never heard of this writer before because he sounds like my perfect writer. Like I've made a video before talking about how some of my favorite literary novels are ones which directly play off from the the lives or the 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 work of past authors and um and this is something he does really self-consciously in this whole series so um so I got the first novel in this series and uh, I I couldn't find um his books in bookshops that when I went and looked on at some on Monday uh, but so I I had to order these online because I couldn't find them any other way and uh, and uh, and I've ordered four the first four in this series. This is the first one, um, which is a play off from Huckleberry Finn and Jim, um, their whole raft ride in, and that um, that that great American novel uh, by Mark Twain. And uh, to my great shame, I've never read Mark Twain before, so I feel like before reading this, I need to go read Mark Twain first, um, but I think it'll be really worth it because this sounds like such a fascinating take on it because it takes the story of um, Huckleberry Finn and Jim and their raft ride um, through the um, years and centuries up until the year 2077 so far in the future um, when Huck Finn comes off from his raft and then sees what the um, what uh, what the world is like now so um so yeah it's, it's like such a fascinating concept and then the next three novels in the series their plays off from Henry David Thoreau and Walt Whitman and uh, oh who's the other one? Oh yeah Edgar Allan Poe so uh, yeah that that'll be really interesting to, to follow and um, yeah it'd be a good um, good reading project for me that I'm you know if Joyce Carol Oates recommends a book to me I'm gonna read it <laughs> it's if uh, you know I have to take up that that personal recommendation uh, then next I have a book of short stories that I bought um, called Stella Maris by Michael Carroll and uh, and Michael Carroll I have to like him is a friend of mine and I've known him for many many years even though we we haven't really kept up in in touch or very close contact over the past um, few years but uh, but I, I'm so happy that he has a new book of short stories out um, he's a really excellent writer and he his first um, collection of short stories was called Little Reef um, he's very good about writing these very uh, uh, 
uh, very distinct personalities of um, these characters. I guess you could call them quite quirky, um, but he, uh, yeah, he he sort of explores their their lives in a really interesting way. And these short stories are all centered around the lives of people in Key West and that whole area. And uh, and I know every January um, there's a literary festival in Key West um, that that Michael goes to, and actually that Joyce Carol Oates goes to as well. And I've wanted to go to this literary festival for as long as I can remember. But when I I've actually looked into it before. For. And the the cost of getting there and the cost of attending the festival is so expensive that it's just really prohibitive. I I couldn't I wouldn't be able to justify it. So I've never gone myself, but I've always absolutely dreamed of of going. So um so yeah, this will be a nice way to experience all of the unique personalities of of people in that area um through these many different stories um which he he writes and uh, yeah and I'm just looking forward to, to reading more of his new work. And then I have a group of new books that publishers have kindly sent me and that I'm really eager to, to read. So the first is called Holiday Heart by Margarita Garcia Robayo, and it's uh, translated by Charlotte Coombe. And uh, this is a novel about a Colombian couple that moved to the United States and uh, make a life for themselves there. And their relationship uh, gradually breaks down over time. And so it sort of traces the, the story of the, the breakdown down of their relationship. Um, I've read um, some of Robayo's uh, fiction before, um, some short stories in this collection called uh, Fish Soup, um, which is um, some novellas and short stories. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really interested to read more of her writing and, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to reading this. The Blind Light by Stuart Evers. Um, this is a big new epic novel. It's over 500 pages long. It's a sort of family saga. And I've read Stuart Evers before, a short story collection of his uh, called Your Father Sends His Love. And his writing is so beautiful and really emotional and moving. So I've been wanting to read more by him. And uh, this novel is supposed to be excellent. So it's about a, a man who in the 1950s um, starts uh, working for the military in a, uh, a mission called Doomstown, um, which is sort of preparing uh, the country for if it in the event of a nuclear war. And, uh, and so it sort of follows his life and his family's life through the decades of British life, um, tracing uh, social and political changes over time, but also changes in the life of his family and um, his, and it follows his children's lives and uh, so yeah so looking about the history of the country for the past 70 years and uh, so yeah I'm sure he has a really interesting perspective on that. Daylight Come by Diana McCauley and McCauley is a Jamaican writer and an environmental activist and the subject of her novel really speaks to her environmental activism um, so it's another novel that's set in the far future in the year 2084 on a Caribbean island where um, climate change has um, caused the, the temperature of the planet to increase so much that um, it's it's so hot that people in the Caribbean can't go out during the day. They um, can only go outside and work during the night and then during the day they just sleep. And uh, and so, yeah, that sounds like a really interesting story. And uh, and you know from a previous video, I've been participating in the Caribbean, um, reading more Caribbean writers. Um, so this is a, a book that I'd like to add to that list of my, my TBR and it's published by PayPal Pre Tree Press, um, which is a, a publishers that um, that publish only Caribbean writers and uh, Black. British writing. And uh, and I, I just um, finished reading another book um, that they published, uh, The Mermaid of Black Conch, which was one of the novels on my TBR. And I loved it so much. So um, yeah, I want to read more books that, that they put out. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting to this. This Happy by Neve Campbell. And this is such an excellent cover for a novel. Um, so uh, this is an Irish writer. And I think this is a debut novel. And uh, it's about a, a woman who, a, a young woman who who has an affair with a married man. And uh, then several years after the end of that whole messy relationship, um, she's in a new uh, relationship, but she's reflecting back on her 
time with this married man and deciding on what path she wants to take next in her life. And uh, yeah, and so I've just heard such great things about this novel, so it's one I'm very eager to read. Fracture by Andreas Newman. This is another excellent, really beautiful cover, isn't it? And also the, the inside has this really lovely purple color. Uh, I think it's just gorgeous. So this is a novel about a character named Mr. Watanabe. It's set in the year 2011 uh, when a giant earthquake in Japan precipitates the Fukushima nuclear disaster and this causes the main character to reflect back on his life and how he was a survivor of uh, the atomic bombs which were dropped in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, so, uh, so it's him sort of looking back on Japan's history and the changing politics and social landscape of the country. And I think it's really interesting that Newman is an Argentinian writer. He, he was born in Buenos Aires, but um, he now lives in Spain. So it's really interesting that he's writing about uh, this Japanese history. The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. This is a novel about two women that meet on a train from London to Cornwall and discover while during the course of this train journey that they both uh, really despise and resent their husbands uh, for different reasons and uh, so they strike up this bargain with each other sort of like the the movie Strangers on a Train where they will kill each other's husbands uh, so it sounds like a really rich interesting plot for for a novel and uh, I've read a few uh, books by Amanda Craig before and really enjoyed her writing so yeah very eager to read this. Heaven and Earth by Paolo Giordano. This is a novel set in Puglia, a really beautiful region in the far south in Italy and it's about a young woman who travels um, there with her father uh, one summer and uh, she meets some neighbors there, three young men, who have a very unique and uh, special relationship uh, that, that bonds them to each other and, um, and through her connection with these young men over the course of that summer she finds everything in her life changes. Uh, so yeah, I'm intrigued by that story and also the uh, the, the author photo of this. Um, he's very handsome, isn't he? So uh, so yeah, I'd like to, to read this. Uh, so those are all the books I want to talk about. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading all of these in the comments below and we can have a chat. I hope you're doing well. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.